So what's going on everyone, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and today I'm going to be giving you a full easter egg guide on the map 9. So you can complete the main easter egg quest, get yourself the achievement, venerated warrior, which is to defeat the most venerated opponent, which is the main boss. Just before we jump into it, I would really appreciate if you guys left a like rating if you found this guide useful, as this has taken hours and hours and hours of game time to complete, and I streamed this all on the channel when I completed this easter egg for the first time. I'll have other guides out for the other black Ops 4 Zombies Easter Eggs all out already and you can find those linked down below in the description. But I'd also like you guys to use the comment section to help you find some teammates because this Easter Egg is most best suited to a team of four. In my opinion, this is probably one of the hardest Easter Eggs you could do in the whole history of Zombies on Solo, so I definitely recommend you try this in co-op. Feel free to use the comment section down below to put your PSN, Xbox Live or Battle.net names to help you find some players. Jumping straight into the game, the first thing we need to do to complete the first step of this easter egg is to open up the pack-a-punch room and if you don't know how to do that then it involves you hitting four gongs around the map to summon champions that are going to drop different zombies heads if you want a more detailed guide on how to complete the pack-a-punch then i have a link for that down below in this video's description but i'm sure most of you watching this already know how to do that so once you've opened the pack-a-punch machine the next step is to look for a certain skull in this area now on your screen now you can see a graphic of all the skull locations which are in line with the center of the Pack-A-Punch area. So if this circle is the Pack-A-Punch machine, then all these red dots are where you'll find skull locations. And you can use this as a visual aid to go to those spots in the temple room of the Pack-A-Punch and see if you can find a skull there that correlates to the positioning of it on this chart. Now, the skull in question that we're going to be looking for is a skull which has a weird blue symbol on the top of it. And the skull can sort of stick out from the wall where when you're looking for this so in my game I found it pretty quickly and as you can tell it's almost sort of protruding out of the wall ever so slightly so just scour around the map like you're seeing me do till I eventually come across it the where I found it might not necessarily always be where it is in your game but when you do come across it you need to look at it whilst activating your special weapon and this will cause the skull to pop out from the wall and you're able to pick it up now that you've picked up this skull you can now take it over over to this grinder which is found in the flooded crypt you'll notice you place the skull and it will just sit nicely on top here at the top of this grinder now there's one final thing we need to do with this grinder before we finished with this machine but it's too early of a round to start this so we're going to move on to the next set of steps now the next step involves you having to do two different activities all at once one which we can't start till about round 12 and one that you can start very very quickly so we're going to need an item from the crowd which you can only get by getting maximum bad crowd affinity so this will involve you doing bad so this is going to throw a item which is poop in order to get this poop you need to perform bad at the game and what the game generally renders you as being bad at the game at is if you walk into the fire which appears and disappears in the main arena but you can also get this very quickly on top of that by throwing grenades at the crowd just play on for a few rounds until you have maximum crowd affinity where the thumb is pointing a 45 degree angle to the left and it's like shining red and you'll notice when there is a crowd affinity item available the crowd are going to throw you some poop which is this clump of mess with a blue glow on it and once you pick it up you'll know you've picked it up because you will lose 250 points and also get a bit of health damage from it now whilst you're working towards your round 11 or 12 you can also start working on getting the death of orion wonder weapon because we're going to be needing that for a few steps in this easter egg and if you don't know how to build the death of orion then i have a link down below in the description as well for how you can get it as well as getting the upgrade which involves just simply putting it in the pack a punch machine quite important that you optimize doing this stuff at a low around as possible before the round 11 12 mark as you can't really do anything else until that and you can very easily get the parts that you need in order to build the death of orion which involves you getting maximum crowd affinity remember if you don't know how to build this weapon precisely then i have a link down below in the description but incorporate doing these steps at around this point in the game where you are waiting for that round 11 or 12 mark now when i say round 11 or 12 
precisely, it doesn't have to be a specific round, but what we are going for here is getting to a round which in this game was round 10, where we have a gladiator axe throwing zombie spawn in. And like I said, this can happen from any round round 10 onwards. It's normally very common to see it at round 11. Round 12 will be pretty late, but you can also get it on round 10. But once we have that, we can begin with the next step. And you're going to want to have an axe throwing gladiator zombie spawn, and you want to bring him to the arena and have him throw an axe at one of the two pyres on the sides of the arena. To do this, just simply walk him around and every so often he'll try and hit you with this throwing axe. And if he throws it in between the pyre, it's going to make a chunk of wood drop down, which you can then go ahead and pick up. This piece of wood is going to be placed in a large cauldron in the lowest floor of Odin's tower in one of these arm shackles. In our game, someone has already done that, but you can see where I'm aiming. This is exactly where you place the wood. Just simply hold square or your interaction button, whatever console you're on. It's going to place the wood right up in there and you're going to have to leave that for about two to three rounds. So just keep checking it. Once you've completed two rounds, just go back to the wood and you should be able to pick it back up. And now it's become charcoal. Now we have the poop, we have the charcoal and we have the skull, which we placed in the grinder. You want to go to the grinder in the flooded crypt and you want to shoot it three times with a fully charged shot of the death of Orion. And you're going to notice on the left side of the machine, it's slowly going to create a pile of powder, which we can then go ahead and pick up after three charged shots of the death of Orion. Now we have all of these items. You simply want to run to the bottom floor of the Zeus tower and you want to place all of these items by holding your interaction button into this bowl here. We now have to go about two rounds or so before we can pick this back up out of the bowl. And if during these two rounds, one of them ends up being a special round where you have a particular boss appearing into the map, which gives you a max ammo at the end, that unfortunately doesn't count to towards the round flips that you have to do but after you've gone for two rounds you can then retrieve the mixture in this bowl and you're going to be placing it between two trees under Danu's entrance floor. If you're doing the wonder weapon then this is practically the same tree that you use for that it's just in between that tree and the one next to it but you're going to place this manure on the floor and you're going to notice it's going to be sitting there. Our next step involves you guess it going two whole rounds we need to go two to three rounds if that includes a special round for you and after those two or three rounds if you come back to this room you should notice that this object on the ground I'm assuming it's manure or fertilizer it should now be smoking green if it is we can go on to the next step and it involves you having a pack a punched weapon with the firebomb alternate ammo type now if you complete your third challenge on the map doing your normal challenge banner you should get a pack a punched pistol from those challenges and you can simply throw that into the pack a punch machine and keep repacker punching it until you get the firebomb effect on it simply run a zombie and kill it over the fertilizer with the firebomb effect and you're going to notice that blue cracks will spawn in the floor under the poop now the final thing that's going to be involved in this step two is we're going to be teleported to a brand new room once all players in the game are stood on the cracked floor and get between 50 to 25 kills just simply stand on the crack and just keep killing zombies until you get teleported but i would recommend beforehand that someone in your game gets the homunculus just so when you get teleported you aren't distracted by killing any zombies but it's going to put you but it's going to teleport you to a darker version of the danu tower and in that room is going to be these red spores on a tree that you just want to fire all of your ammo into. Don't worry, you're going to get a max ammo once you've completed this, but this is where the homunculus comes in handy so someone can throw it and the rest of the team can just go ham sandwich just spraying the spore completely. Once you've completed that spore, you'll get a max ammo and you can now go upstairs and complete this process again and then after that, you're going to do another one which is going to be right on the very top. So there's three different spores in total that you're going to be just loading all of your ammo into in order to make this thing complete but once you have completed it you will be teleported back into the normal map and we can begin with the next step for the next step you're going to want to make sure that by now you have the zombie shield in this map which is the brazen ball if you don't know how to build that then there'll be a link down below in the description but you need it for this next step and i'm sure most of you watching know exactly how to get this shield and you use it every game anyway it's pretty damn useful for saving your life but there's going to be different ball symbols which will appear around the map which you need to set on fire using the gun of the shield which involves you just having the shield out and 
then pressing the left trigger and then the right trigger which will allow you to shoot. There's going to be these different symbols which are going to appear around the map in these locations and by shooting them it's going to cause a special zombie to appear which you need to go and kill. So I believe there's a total of four of these that can spawn in the map but we have around about 10 or so locations. So this first one I'm showing you here is in the flooded crypt in this window right here. You just want to aim in the window and off to the left you'll notice this little medallion that's circled here. You want to be shooting that with your shield. The next possible location can be in a wall which is near the bridge between Zeus and Odin so when you're crossing the bridge just look out and you should see that one as a potential spawn. The next one can be in the Danu tunnel and it's going to be in this window debris which has a staircase leading up you might notice it in there. If it's not there then it could be in the Odin or Zeus temple entrance and it's going to be right up there on the wall very easy to see. The next location can be in a window to in the pit which is right next to where you build the shield. It's going to be just to the right of that buildable table and as you can see it's in the window there to the right. The next location can be in the temple which is the Pack-a-Punch room. You want to go up the stairs and one of the sides of the temple that leads you back out of the Pack-a-Punch area. If you look out of this little window here you might notice one of these ball symbol so go ahead and start shooting that the next one can be in the Ra tower burial chamber in a zombie spawn which is on a wall it's quite a nifty one but we did get it in our game and that one can be found right there the next location can be in the arena which is the spawn room and if you just look up at where you see these uh, rectangular shapes there could possibly be one on there and the last and final location is going to be in the Danu altar room and you simply want to look out the window and down to your right there could be another one there. Once you found all four of these and you shot them it's going to spawn in four special zombies and when you kill them they're going to float up in the air and their souls are going to be dragged into the Ra tower and once all the champions are slain there's going to be an obelisk at the Ra altar room so there's this pillar in the middle of the room and the Ra altar perk is going to beam this weird symbol on top of this pillar. All players in the game need to walk up to this symbol on the pillar and hold the interaction button and it's going to teleport you into an alternate version of the raw tower and on this pillar you're going to start noticing a load of flashing symbols these are going to be showing one at a time and each of these symbols correlates to a specific zombie type that you have to kill so on your screen now i'm showing you guys a very clear description of what each symbol translates to and what type of enemy it translates to and you get a very limited time window when you watch this pillar and you enter into this alternate version of the raw tower to watch each symbol spawn on that pillar and quickly note down what zombie type you need to kill as the order that you see from bottom to top is the order in which the zombies need to be killed so for example if we see these set of symbols on top of the tower here you can see that it flashes the symbols one at a time and as you see these you need to correlate it with the guide of the symbols you're seeing on screen so in this game sequence starts with fire then it flashes to water then it goes to electric and then finally it is tiger so in the game a fire zombie is the first special zombie that we have to kill then it needs to be a water zombie then it has to be an electric zombie and then finally a tiger so what you need to do in this sequence you're locked in the raw tower you need to kill each special zombie as they appear per symbol on the pillar from bottom to top if you at any point shoot a wrong elemental zombie which you don't need then you're going to fail it and you're going to have to go to the next round before the raw perk machine will activate this little symbol again and then you can teleport back into the alternate reality. Now there are going to be normal zombies spawning with you at this point as well and you can kill those as much as you want. They do not matter but if you do kill an elemental special zombie when you didn't need to in the order which it's shown then you're going to get a fail. So in this co-op game we managed to get a really good strategy down for this and we assigned two people to be watching the pillar for the symbols quickly finding out what they are and then another player writing them down so we have them concrete on paper so we know exactly what the order is so we have two people watching the pillar up top and then me and someone else are going to be either on the middle floor below them or the bottom floor training up zombies and trying to get some of these special zombies to spawn now what is useful is that the four zombies you need will all eventually spawn in at the same time but it's all about killing them in the correct order which is going to 
to make this work. If at any point you kill the wrong type of special zombie in the incorrect order, then you're going to get this wrong. And like I said, you're gonna have to go to the next round in order for you to try this again. The team coordination is absolutely key here in order for you to get this step completed. And you're gonna need good team coordination because once you complete this once, you can go back up to the pillar and you're gonna all have to press the interaction button again as you're gonna do the process one more time. It'll give you a second sequence of four different symbols which correlate to a different special zombie we're gonna have to kill in the specific order from bottom to top again. So make sure you have that little symbol chart open when you're doing this step and I'll have it linked down below in the description as well so you guys can open that up so you can use that whilst you're watching this video. Once you've completed this successfully, you'll be transported back into the normal map for the second time and the pillar should have a complete set of eight different symbols on it and that's that challenge completed and we can go on to the next step. Now for the next step, you're gonna have to head underground near Pack-A-Punch and there's gonna be four different windows where you're gonna find four poles which are going to be in windows that weren't previously there before. So this can be in the cursed room right here. You can see what this looks like and you simply want to shoot it with a gun and you'll notice that the pole in the window will start spinning around and you just want to keep doing it until it's not spinning anymore and there'll be a new object which has replaced it. We're going to be doing this four times as there's four different poles. That was the collapsed tunnel location. There's another in the Odin tunnel right there that you're going to notice. You just want to continue shooting that until that disappears. Then there's going to be one in the Danu tunnel which is going to be in this little window right here. And finally the last one is in a window in the collapsed tunnel. I apologize if earlier in the guide I said that first window I showed you was a collapsed tunnel. That was actually the cursed room as you could clearly see on screen. Clearly I've not slept enough when making this guide. If you have shot all four poles underground until they're raised up out of the ground, we can move on to the next step. But before this, you're going to need to get a little bit set up with a particular pack-a-punch variant. And this is going to be a weapon with kilowatt. If at this point you don't already have a weapon with kilowatt, then I definitely advise you to to get one out of the box or even better just buy a gun off the wall in this game I was using the KN a lot and you can buy ammo for that down below in the underground area a lot so it's very very handy once all players in the game have set up you don't all necessarily need kilowatt but it is very useful and if you're doing this solo then obviously you're going to need kilowatt but once everyone's ready head to the middle of the arena and all players have to interact with the stone which is in the middle and it's going to teleport you down into the underground I'm from there you have to run up to the arena and you're going to notice there's going to be some electrical circles in four corners of the arena the objective here is you need to gather up a bunch of zombies and shock the enemies using the kilowatt repack effect and then when they're stunned kill them and you'll notice that some electricity from these zombies are going to be transferred up into the poles above but obviously the kilowatt effect doesn't happen every time you shoot so this is going to be a bit of a tedious process but you're going to have to just continue trying training up zombies, bringing them into this blue circle you see on the ground and then shooting them to activate the kilowatt effect so they're stunned and then shooting them. But once you're done, you'll notice that the sort of blue orb that you're getting the souls for is going to be lit up blue and you can move on to helping your friends or yourself out with another one. But eventually you're going to notice that all of the orbs are going to have an electrical current which is going to connect to all of them. It all goes back to the challenge bowls in the arena. So once this has been completed, you want to get all the players players to make their way back into the challenge bowls in the middle of the arena and each challenge bowl should have an orb that you all have to activate at the same time and once you've activated these orbs you're going to notice that the arena color is going to look a little bit different and we're now going to have an onslaught of special zombies that we're going to need to defeat but you will be given your specialist weapon in your hand and you are given an unlimited specialist weapon to take out all sorts of zombies such as the gladiators as well as the tigers and your objective here is to just kill everything you see there's going to be a lot of things spawning it seems like it's never ending but trust me it eventually is and when your specialist runs out just by i think it's even just shooting some of the special zombies or maybe killing one of them you'll be granted your special weapon back again and you can use that to just keep going around and killing all of the zombies but once you have completed all of that 
you will now be put back into the normal map and we can begin with the next step. Now, this next step sounds very complicated but I'll show you how to complete this very very easily but there's going to be nine blue symbols which are going to be spawned in the under part of the map and this is where whichever player has the death of Orion is going to be using the weapon specifically to complete this easter egg step. Now when you come to do this you don't need to learn where all of these symbols are in any way all you need to do is just simply shoot the following symbols at these specific angles with the death of Orion in order to get all of the symbols to glow and once you've shot them correctly the symbols should stay blue forever. So there's this one which is going to be in the pit and all you want to do is simply look through the broken wall section right here and just shoot and you should notice the symbol should light up and it should stay lit up. If it hasn't then your angle is not quite right and you just need to try again. The next one is Danu's temple and it's on this pillar and all you need to do is simply jump up when you shoot it and it's going to shoot that shot through and align it with that other symbol that you see just behind it. And the last symbol is going to be in the crypts in a window and you simply want to shoot it in this exact angle in this window here and it should light that one and it should stay lit and it would have lit all the others. Now this next step is going to involve you on lockdown. You're going to be having to fight a ton of zombies so make sure that you and all the other players in your game are suited and booted for this one. You've got your perks, you've got your special weapons, you've got your pack-a-punch weapons because you're going to be in this for a bit of a long one but once everyone is set up and ready you need to have everyone stand on the metal grates in the back of the pit and you want to hold square and you're going to notice there will be a gear noise when everyone stood on it and done correctly we're going to be teleported into a special version of the room where everything is locked off so we can't leave it and there's going to be a bunch of waves of zombies and special enemies that we need to kill so there's three waves in total and once you've completed every wave you are gifted with a max ammo the zombie waves start off as just normal zombies before we get a mixture of zombies and gladiators with tigers and then finally we get gladiators we get tigers we get zombies and we get blight fathers so it's about a five to ten minute lockdown sequence so you're going to be in there for a while so just make sure you use the space wisely there are traps you can turn on and you are right next to the shield so if your shield is getting low you can just go ahead and purchase a brand new one as each wave completes you'll notice that the grates that we stood on below will start filling up with water and on the third and final wave completion you to actually finish this go Go back to the grate you stood on and look towards the metal grate where you can see the water piling in and you're going to notice a small little box which contains a key. Pick that up and you should be transported back to the normal map now where you have full access to the entire map. If you make your way back to the arena you'll notice at one of the gates that the enemies come out of during special rounds there will be a red portal and if you go up to said portal it's going to say press interaction to enter the boss fight. Bear in mind it says you will not return so at this point it is absolutely essential that you kit yourself out with absolutely everything. Make sure you've got full ammo in your weapons, they're double pack a punch to make sure you've repapped them four times as that will give you four times more damage damage than a normal pack a punched weapon. Also I'd recommend that you guys get all the perks that you have in your game just buy them and also it is quite useful if one of your teammates have the humunculus if you don't already at this point they're all very very useful like we mentioned for earlier steps but if you don't already have them maybe a good chance to get them and make sure you've got a full shield but when all of your team are ready go up to the arena and hold square to travel to the boss fight arena you will not return. When you're transported you will be taken to a brand new arena room which is the boss fight and after a small amount of time the gates on the front left of the arena will open and a bunch of gladiators will start running out towards you which you're gonna have to obviously start killing but don't be distracted because there are gladiators spawning in all four corners of the arena so it's a good chance now for all of your team to split up so you have different sections that way you can deal with all the gladiators one by one but this is not even the half of it because once you've taken out a fair amount of the gladiators you're going to notice the left gate will reopen and something even bigger and badder is going to appear. And just before we get round to that it is also something to point out that by killing the gladiators you will get a lot of max ammos and they are there infinitely so there's no time delay on when you can get these they're not going to disappear anytime soon. So you're going to have a bunch of max ammos in that boss fight so there's no real worry on you running out of 
ammo. So just bear that in mind. Just keep some spare just in case, you know, you run out of ammo. But you just want to keep fighting the gladiators and taking them out until eventually we have a brand new foe to defeat. You'll notice that the gate will be fully open on the left. You'll hear a quote from the announcer and the boss will spawn, which is this gigantic elephant, which is just incredible. This thing is insane. It has a few different attacks, which can hurt you quite considerably. They have gladiators on top of the elephant, which will throw these fireballs at you, which will deal a fair amount of damage. And he also has an attack where he will charge into you. And he also goes around on a rampage at the very start of his initial boss fight reign by running into these different flaming pillars. Now, what your job is is that on either side of the elephant's armor you're going to see this red sort of jewel and that's what you're wanting to be aiming at to shoot because we need to break off the armor of the elephant first before we can deal any real damage to him now it is worth pointing out as well that keep the same strategy as you were taking out of gladiators because you're still going to have a fair amount of zombies that which are now going to be spawning in instead of gladiators and still watching out for the attacks the elephant can do in terms of the gladiators on his back throwing different fireballs at you which can really hurt you but eventually from shooting the sides of the elephant his shield or armor is going to shatter and we can now focus on his weak spot which is going to be his rib cage which is exposed on the sides where his armor used to be and now also on his torso which is under his front two legs just be aiming to shoot that and you're going to notice that he's going to fall to the ground and you'd think that would be the end of the boss fight but you see the elephant will transform into a soul and flow over to the right gate in the front of the arena and the announcer will now say that there is something even worse coming and the elephant is reincarnated but is even bigger and badder now during this there's also going to be a bunch of arrows which the crowd are going to be shooting at you to try and hurt you so that's something to be avoiding as well as the flame attacks that the elephant does by shooting those small blue flames but the aim of this is to be shooting the gem again on the side of the elephant's armor which is now going to be a blue crystal this is going to take considerably longer amount of time to destroy than it did the first time but again you'll know once this is done because his armor will shatter and we can now repeat the process again of just firing at his weak spots which is his rib cage and as well as the jewel on his forehead but once you've done enough damage you'll notice the elephant will be stuck in place and slowly struggling before falling down to the ground and once this has happened you will have completed the nine easter egg it really is as simple as that and then the cutscene is going to play but there we go my friends that is your easter egg tutorial on how to complete the Black Ops 4 Zombies map 9. Big shout out to Mr. Ruffle Waffles, Smart Guy 316, and Liam for being the first in the world to complete this Easter egg. And a massive shout out to the entire community for the contribution that has gone into completing this Easter egg. It's been no easy feat. And I also want to give a big thank you to the COD Zombie subreddit for some of the clips used within this guide, as it was gameplay I simply couldn't get myself. So big thank you to all of those guys but thank you so much for watching this guide if it helped you out in any way shape or form then please leave a like rating down below as i streamed for about nine hours today to get this easter egg completed for you all and now spending hours getting this guide out for you as well but i'd love to know if it was helpful down below in the comment section but thank you for watching hit that like button subscribe for more awesome videos and you can check out the guides for the other zombies maps on your screens now and down below in the playlist link but thank you for watching and i'll catch you for another zombies video very very soon